Over the next few episodes, we'll be exploring modulation. We'll be dividing things up by mod destination, so the parameter being modulated. Within each episode, we'll be dividing things up by mod source, so the modulating signal. Here's a general layout of what we'll be tackling in each episode. Notice we start with a very simple signal and gradually add complexity. This week we're starting with pitch and there's a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. A constant signal is just a flat line. If the point of modulation is motion, why would we use a flat line? By definition, constants have no motion. Crucially, constants are rarely used on their own. They're either used as intermediaries for a manual action, or they'll be used in conjunction with other more complex modulators. For now, let's focus on the intermediary aspect, because this is something that we're all familiar with. In fact, there's one constant modulator that we use at almost all times, keyboard CV. When you play a note on the keyboard, it generates a CV signal that controls the oscillator's pitch. So for example, if I play this, you can almost imagine the pitch CV forming a sort of staircase shape. Pitch control voltage is normally exponential and uses the volt per octave standard. So for every one volt increase in CV, you'll see an increase of one octave or a doubling of the frequency. This is what allows us to make musically consistent modulation. Let's demonstrate this with another source of constant CV, the mod wheel. I'm setting the mod amount so that our pitch increases by one octave when the wheel is at maximum position, regardless of our prior pitch. It's also possible to set negative mod amounts. So here the wheel is set to decrease pitch by an octave. With this knowledge, we can now start to create a general framework for pitch modulation. Soon we'll be making some pretty crucial tweaks to this, but for now let's move on to envelopes. In this group, we'll be including all non-cycling modulators. So this includes envelopes, one-shot LFOs, and non-looping function generators. For this group, we can use the same framework as before, but with one major difference. Envelopes change over time, so instead of our mod amount being a fixed number, it's just our maximum level, and it'll be dependent on the current position or current level of the modulator. So we end up with something a little closer to this. If our mod amount is an octave, we won't actually hear an octave adjustment unless the envelope is at its maximum point. Popular uses for this type of modulation include percussive sounds, 808 style kicks, water drop sounds, zaps, and things of that nature. These sounds are all envelope based, and because of that, they're unipolar, meaning they only move in one direction. We'll modulate above our pre mod frequency or below it. Bipolar mod sources, such as one shot LFOs, move in both directions. Consider a slow, one shot sine wave. As it increases, we move from our original pitch to our original pitch plus mod amount. Then we cross our pre mod value and move to our original pitch minus our mod amount and then right back to our original pitch. From here, it's not much of a leap to move to our next mod source. In this group, we have any looping signal that is below audio rate. So this includes LFOs, looping envelopes, and looping function generators. LFOs have shown up a few times in this series, but we haven't been formally introduced to them, so let's learn a little more about them. LFOs are oscillators, which we've spoken a lot about. They have the same waveforms, they have the same parameters. The only difference is they move at very low frequencies. LFOs are used as bipolar control voltages, and in terms of pitch, they're most often used for vibrato. So let's take an LFO and assign it to control pitch. Now our pitch fluctuates above and below our pre-mod level, hitting its maximum at pre-mod plus mod amount, and dropping as low as pre-mod minus mod amount. But what if we want the effect to fade in gradually, so that we don't detune the onset of our note? Well, one way to solve this is to use a manual constant or an envelope as our mod amount. Here I'm setting the wheel to control the amount of modulation provided by the LFO. Now we can fade in and fade out. And we're not limited to the mod wheel. Any control signal can be used for this, including envelopes and LFOs. So let's make one final adjustment to our framework, using the term controller to denote a signal that controls the mod amount of a modulator. And with that, we've reached a general framework for pitch modulation. You can add as many controllers and as many modulators as you want, and it should hold up, with maybe a little bit of extra generalizing. Here are some other uses for LFOs. Octave leaps. Here we take a square wave and modulate up a tritone. Now our pitch jumps up half an octave above and then half an octave below. So we add a constant modulator to bring us back in tune. Using a sawtooth as your modulator, you can produce a sort of rumble or jagged effect. 
Using a ramp produces a similar effect, but swooping up instead of down. Modulating with a ramp wave, with an envelope as a controller, is a great way to produce laser sound effects. Modulating with noise dirties up the signal by adding instability to the pitch. If we slow that down to a very slow random signal, we get a random frequency generator for instant R2-D2 sounds. Combine noise modulation with a slow global LFO for mellow lo-fi patches. As we increase the frequency of our LFO, we'll start to notice unpredictable timbral changes. This will bring us to the next episode in our series where we'll talk about basic audio rate FM. If you like this episode and want bonus tutorials, support me on Patreon for weekly mini-episodes, where we take a more hands-on approach to the content covered in Synth Fundamentals. This week we'll be using envelope pitch modulation to create some percussion sounds. As always, on that beat, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.